this deck I've named Frogger. So it's a tribal deck uh, based on Gronok the Omnivore. So I think there's basically two ways you can build around Gronok. Uh, there's a like a good way and a bad way, and I've gone for the bad way here, which is to play off the um, whenever a frog attacks effect. The probably more effective way is to just use other mill cards to build yourself and not try and play a frog tribal deck, but I think frog tribal deck is more fun. Basically there's not enough frogs to build a deck in standard, or at least not enough playable frogs, but we have shapeshifters to fill in kind of beta testing the deck at the moment so we have a few different things in like single copies to see which things work well and which don't and also I don't have uh, four copies of a lot of the cards so yeah basically the main sort of combo engine is Willowgeist and Grolnock so if you mill cards and they get exiled by Grolnock you get counters on Willowgeist there's a few flashback cards and other ways, like things like Root Cold Creeper that connects up from the graveyard as well to buff Willowgeist. Uh, but yeah, also got things like Three Seasons, um, Croaking Counterpart, Bears of Lit Yara to make shapeshifters and as a bit of removal. The deck's quite short on removal, we don't really have anything else besides some Blizzard Rolls and the fight effect from Bears of Litiara, so if the opponent has um, something problematic in the early game, we're probably going to lose. But yeah, the rest of the early drops are basically built around hitting a Willowgeist or one of these other, like Willowgeist or a Grolnock, using tapping at the window and just ramping into these combo pieces. So the dollhouse is to bring back things that we might incidentally mill like, or that die early, like a Willowgeist or a Grolnock. It also makes um, a token, which it could be targeted by Esker's Chariot, for example. And the same for the Kraken counterpart token. We also have two Mimics, the Mirror Hall Mimic, which comes back as an enchantment that keeps duplicating a creature, which you can cast on enemy creatures as well. And Glass Pool Mimic, which copies only a creature you control. And yeah, the Maskwood Nexus interacts nicely both with the Grolnock frog effect by making everything a frog, including Willowgeist and the Dollhouse of Horrors, because if you have both of these out or if you have some Dollhouse tokens, and Maskwood, then everything you've got on the board becomes a construct as well. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, I think it definitely has some, um, like a few things that could be fixed to make the deck more effective. Probably I don't really need to be playing the Morate of the Frost. Could maybe get some more ramp or chip removal in there to make the deck a bit more solid. Um, but I thought it was a fun thing to just test out all of these cards. The Frog Hamath as well works really nicely in the deck because you can often attack, uh, like when you first drop it, they might have no blockers up if they've been attacking aggressively and also um, get the Gronok triggers off attacking with the Frog Hamath, which can be a surprise. Like you might have a 1 1 Willow Geist there and if you attack with Frog Hemoth and Grill Knock suddenly you could potentially six up to six cards. So six, six counters on the Willowgeist. So yeah, let's get into some games. So this looks okay. The Willowgeist doesn't do much as a turn one drop, so I think I'd drop the Rhymewood Falls. Uh, and then potentially Willowgeist or just go straight into two drops. Rhymewood into Root Cold Creeper. So playing against a Dorothea deck. Um, what we really don't want to see is uh, Denik. 
Pious Apprentice, which probably will be in this deck. Uh, it's quite an annoying card, because while it's on the battlefield you can't um, can't target things in graveyards. So like, um, Frog Hemoth can't expel things. Okay, he attacks with Dorothea. If I play bears now, he potentially can play around the removal. But it would mean wasting like three turns without hitting a creature out, so I'm okay with that. Seeds for some reason. Okay, a better hand here, I think. We have three lands on the play, and we have Dollhouse in hand to start bringing back things that we mill. Maybe playing a goblin deck. Be good if we can hit a self mill card. Sometime soon, start um, filling the yard for Dollhouse. guys not super useful but we can Dryad's Revival to buff both of them sure, let's do that
this map. The opponent concedes. So I guess this deck right now kind of more just annoying people than <laughs> comboing off, but I mean if it works it works I guess. Gronuck and a Renin 7. A decent card engine. Root Cog Reaper would be nice here to get into the Gronuck quicker. Ambitious Farmhand. Might be a. I haven't seen this played in many decks except the Eric deck that I play. Okay, it's a discard deck. It's not a. Duncan Island, don't really care. Maybe copy the expert this turn just to annoy the opponent with their own discard. Oh, it's not a rogue, right? That was a bit of a silly play. We have a blocker for the farmhand. No blocks right now. Alright, so next turn we can drop the Geist, maybe cast Mimic on the Geist. Put another adversary turn out. Debuff all these other creatures. Keep run seven live enough to kill. That's because the um the run and seven putting stuff in the graveyard's gonna power these geists up as well. I actually think he would have been better off just ignoring Run and Seven. Buffing our geists up.
don't really want it want to attack into that. Right now. We actually didn't hit any lands with Ronin 7. Okay, they're playing Dollhouse. Guess adversary coming out, but they can't power it up. Since they don't have the mana. think which um which of these is more valuable to us probably the real one because with the other one we can just um so we can turn that one into a another creature Um, I can take that much damage. I'm going to be gaining four back. All right. Um, I think maybe we want to run Runa 7 first. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mana. We can. Prosperous Innkeeper. can bounce the um, thing that he brings back with Dollhouse. Probably going to be an adversary. Yeah, and he's going to spend all his mana to buff that. So I'll let him do that and attack. And then once he's attacked, I'll bounce it and block productively with these creatures. Now the Willow Geist is pretty good at this point. Right, now we can... Uh, we don't really want to get rid of that right now. Could just keep the... take the damage from the priest, we're probably going to get more life back next turn anyway. And we're denying, denying him things in his graveyard to target with the 
Dollhouse. So the main problem with this deck is actually keeping track of what cards you have. <laughs> yeah, I guess we go to combat. of um, triggers going on here and the opponent concedes. I don't know if that's a... it wasn't an infinite trigger I think the triggers are just quite slow to um, go on the stack. We had... So here we have a few shapeshifters in the deck. Looks like a decent starting hand we can get the Geist out and hopefully Hit the grown up with tucking at the window. There's plenty of ways in the deck to um, trigger the low geist effect. Um, even without grown up, things like flashback spells are tapping at the window. There's our grown up. So playing against looks like maybe mono black, so probably going to be facing a lot of removal, especially with learn. I'll be able to pull removal with that. Um, we don't really ramp into Gronok by casting that. I think maybe we just mimic our Geist here. Could also cast Bears. Um, yeah, let's go with the Actually, no, the bears is maybe the better three dot three dot play. Bears with Yara. Actually, isn't that much of a problem. This turn we can start getting grown up going. Hit three permanents, so Geist's gonna get buffed. Our um, Willow Geist is. Okay. I was going to say it's out of range of a um, board wipe, but it's not out of range of single target removal. Um, that seems good. Drop the Haven. Geist back. Start buffing him up again. 
I will actually maybe drop the innkeeper first. Plenty of permanents going into our graveyard. Guys. Alright, they finally realise that they need to kill Gronok. Uh, we don't have enough mana for tapping at the window and Grolnock if we find it. I think we just go with this. the other Willow Ghost in case they have a board wipe. In a pretty good position to be able to rebuild if they do wipe the board. Geist Mimic. We're going to kill the Geist instead. We can start digging for Gronok. Nothing there. Should have probably cast that before flashing back the other card. need to um, get our Gronok back at this point. Survival in the graveyard works as well. Um, five, six, seven. The extra mana isn't 
to be useful, so we'll hang on to Mimic. Opponent's top decking, so we have a bit of time to be able to try and find plays. back. Can't play him this turn but I can drop the guys. Past turn. So next turn we have eight mana. We can drop Gronok and the Nexus. Attack with everything and hopefully the Geist will get huge. So now that we have Gronach again, we get our access to our Croak counter spells back. I guess here they grab removal for one of these. Uh, we don't have another Gronach in our graveyard. Build that. I copied the second one um, so that the copy is a shapeshifter rather than just a regular. Okay, they destroyed the least threatening thing on the board, which works for me.
I could just grab um, Blizzard Brawl to get rid of their creature. can find another grow knock we'll be in a pretty good position all right that meat hooking kind of what we were dreading earlier but it took long enough to hit it I guess Still got uh, two copies of Grolnock in our library somewhere. We make a shapeshifter, another root core creeper. that this turn. I guess we would have still had mana for divide by zero anyway. Alright, they're making lots of zombies this turn I guess. Doesn't really matter because those zombies can't block.
we're kind of in danger now of milling ourselves with Grownuck. So 12 damage. Uh, is that going to be 12, 17? I think that's fine. We've got 40 health. So once we drop Drone up with a Krog counter on it, we have Dollhouse. If we Dollhouse a um, I'm going to lose life off there, so that's fine. So yeah, we dollhouse the Geist, comes back with haste. I don't know why I'd, I have a timer here when I've already resolved these triggers. It's a bit of bullshit on behalf of the game, but anyway. Um, sure. Alright, so we grow knock, we oh we look can learn as well. Uh, don't really need probably just removal is the most useful thing here. Alright, so how much mana do we have? Four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And 11 from the root coal creeper. Hopefully that's enough. And it should be just enough to... Well, we get a land as well. And the opponent can see it. So yeah, the play was Dollhouse into um, Willowgeist. And then attacking with everything. Milling the rest of my deck. Which was about 17 cards. And that should have hit... Um, enough permanence that the Willow Geist would be lethal. So we don't have combo pieces here, but we've got the land we need plus some ramp. We should be able to get into Ren 7 pretty early. If it doesn't get... Okay, we're playing against zombies, so we're probably not going to get countered. This could be an example of a combo deck that outpaces us, especially on the play. But we do have a lot ramp, which works in our favour. Could probably block one of these, I think. And they'll bounce the headless rider to slow them down a bit, and so that they don't get the extra token. Don't want Mirror Lake right now. I actually think I'll take the Mirror Lake out of the deck. They're not. Um, not doing that much and they're also just slowing down the my early game not being able to yeah 
yeah, having to play tap lands at the start makes it hard to get things like Root Call Creeper out. Alright, we can grow up here. I was gonna say we're probably okay with defending against a board wipe. But it looks like the opponent saw what was coming with this Willigeist Grawnock combo. Mm. 